Hey, Steph, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you, big guy. Go, oh, man. Um, so I, I had a conversation with uh, with Mike Loxley over at Maryland the other day, mm-hmm. and he was saying, you know, talk a little bit about your your decision to commit to Maryland. That in the recruiting community, those who didn't know the situation saw it as kind of like an uncool, unpopular move, but that you are the type of guy who, if the outside world perceives it as uncool, that you're going to make it cool, that you're going to make it a place to be. And so uh, I'm curious if if you've noticed or saw any parallel between perception of you going to Maryland and the perception of you coming to Buffalo. Uh, yeah, I, I can see how people can see it that way, especially coming from the standpoint of uh, – um, nobody wanted to go to Maryland back then, you know, not too many guys, at least. Uh, and the guys that were, they were trying to do the same thing I was trying to do is kind of turn things around and get the city where it needed to be. And for me, I'm definitely one of the people that's always going to kind of not necessarily go against the grain, but not go with what everybody else is doing. Uh, I kind of just believed, on my, believed in myself. You know, I wanted to be home. I wanted to be near my family, you know, stay around close to them. You know, I got a little brother, brothers. So I wanted to be close to them. Uh, and it worked out. And just, I was like coming to Buffalo is a little different just because I got traded here. You know, it definitely was a situation where though not really in my control. Um, but as far as like it becoming cool or being cool, I wasn't in it to be cool at this point. You know, I'm a professional. I'm just trying to uh, get better and be where I need to be when I'm supposed to be there and be a professional. Yeah, and I, I guess cool cool was Mike's term. I, I yeah. guess the, the point was like making an perceived unattractive destination yeah. an attractive destination. But either way, do you feel like that process, though, that uh, your your decision to go to Maryland and being there through the criticism, did that frame the rest of your career, or your mentality in any way? Uh, to a certain extent, just because everything that happened there, like, uh, you know, I got hurt my second year, you know, kind of battling through that. That was my first time uh, really dealing with an injury in football that I couldn't play. So uh, breaking, my ankle, breaking my ankle kind of gave me a different outlook and appreciation for the game. And then uh, just, you know, it kind of gave me, I've always been a winner in my heart. I know I'm a winner. I know uh, I'm always going to do everything in my power, give it everything I got. So no matter what team I'm on, um, I, try to, I try to do that. So going into Buffalo in my new situation, kind of with, with what you were saying, people, uh, a lot of people weren't too high on Buffalo or people in the outside world. But, you know, none of that really matters to me. Uh, excuse my language. But uh, I like the guys that I'm around. I can, you know, I appreciate the guys that I'm around. They grind for the time and just like any, any other team. So uh, having a level of appreciation for them, you won't have that unless you're around them. And, you know, I got it. All right, man. I appreciate you. No doubt. Hey, Stefan, it's John Scott. Um, obviously, you guys have had John Brown in and out of the lineup throughout parts of this season. You know, yeah. at least with him being on IR, it's going to be a little more extended. I, is, I don't know if comfortable is the most the best word to use, but are you guys getting used to operating as a passing offense without him in the lineup? Yeah, I mean, I feel like we have to, you know, just because the circumstance and the situation, of course, we want we want JV back and smoke a huge part of our offense. So uh, kind of adjusting on the fly, and, um, you know, we got a bunch of young guys that can play, um, young guys that we want, like Gabe Davis, you know, we asked we ask a young guy to grow up fast, you know, come out here, play fast, do your job. And he's been doing a great job all year. He's made, he made some plays. Apparently, we we gonna look for him to make a lot more of them because he I, I can see a lot of potential in him, and um, you know that's just that's just what the job calls for. You know you don't want to get comfortable without a guy, but uh, we can't stop. You know the offense can't stop. We got to keep rolling, find find ways to win. Um, you know putting running backs out there and stuff like that, make them run some routes as well. But anything we got to do to win, of course we're not gonna get comfortable without Jake, Jake John Brown uh, smoke. So uh, as soon as he gets back, we hope he hope he has a speedy recovery so he can come back soon. But uh, just you know, next man up, Monson. You mentioned Gabriel, and obviously as a rookie, maybe he's getting a little more run than, than traditionally, and he's been impactful even when John Brown was in the lineup. Yeah. I don't want to use the phrase surprising, but how unique is it for a rookie to come in and make an impact and, and seemingly transition smoothly from the college game immediately? Uh, these days it's not very surprising because you see a lot of guys coming from, um, coming from schools that pass the ball, uh, having success, and guys who – who was ballers in college coming to the league and, and have success. You know, you'd be more surprised when guys don't have success because, you know, it's still the same game of football, it's still the same game you've been playing since you were a kid. So um, not from my, my end, at least, I'm not, I'm not that surprised. I'm happy that we have him. Um, I'm surprised he didn't go higher in the draft as well. 
because I, I think I think he can play. The kid can play. So for me, uh, just having having him, you know, continue to motivate us as well. You know, he made a lot of plays in camp that a lot of people didn't see. Uh, so we kind of saw the potential early. So him having success doesn't really surprise us. But I'm I'm just happy to have him, and hopefully we can you know push forward and have more success. Appreciate it. Thank you. I know. Hey, Stephon, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. Hey, um, Ashley Holder with Channel 2 here. Last time we spoke, you said that you were like genuinely happy to be with these guys, a part of this team and the situation that you're in. Do you feel like that's why your success has been able to translate to the field this season? Yeah, definitely being in the right space mentally, being around the right people and uh, kind of like everybody pushing forward to that same goal. You know, you limit the distractions, you know, and, and part of that is being and being happy and being in the right place. And, you know, uh, so I, I kind of feel like it translates 100 percent, especially on the field when you're out there smiling, having a good time and enjoying the game. You know, it, it can get serious at times, but uh, when you're out there having fun, that's when you play loose and you play free. When you talk about playing loose and free, do you feel like that's like you just naturally you feel different when you're out there because your your mind is mentally clear? Yeah, because I ain't thinking too much. You know, I'm not thinking about stuff that's going on in my life. I'm not thinking about stuff that's going on in the world. I'm going to focus on just the game, one play at a time, uh, having success, making plays for the quarterback. So my mind is clear. My mind's in a great place, and I can I can just, you know, play. I ain't got to think. All right, thanks. Steph Finesse, Mookie Hopkins, Red Force Force 1080. Got you, big guy. I got you now. Uh-uh, it's muted. Got you now. <laughs> you got me now? Mm-hmm. Hey, happy belated birthday, by the way, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Um, when teams play off coverage, you know, they play those three man pressures or that cover two shell because they respect your game. Uh, how does that motivate you to be even more polished as a receiver? Yeah, uh, it definitely puts me in a space where you got to take what they give you. Not going probably not going to give you that many shots um, in any any zone. You got to find an area. So me and my quarterback being on the same page is huge. Um, last week, we kind of like try to figure it out early. We try to take a shot early. You know, they had two guys back there still. I wish I would have made that play for him, but uh, we ended up getting a flag. And, you know, kind of like just taking what the defense to give you definitely motivates me. Um, I got to work a little harder than usual. You know, when you beat one guy, it's just one on one. I love. I, I would. I would expect or appreciate that a little bit more often. But um, being being a you know being a team that passes the ball a lot, you can't expect man coverage too often. You know, everybody doesn't have the guys that go man to man all the time. So playing zone is the safer route, or kind of puts you in the best position to win the game. So uh, for me, it just you know it definitely motivates me to. Dig. You gotta get you gotta get your butt open today. So so get open for real. So uh, it definitely puts me in a good place. 